Hey, what's up? I'm Scotty Young. Today, I'm going to be doing a daily sketch of Kid Hellboy. Why am I doing finger guns? I don't know. <laughs> I'm a cartoonist. I draw. Hi. Cartoonist. Hey. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be doing a daily sketch of Kid Hellboy and talking a little bit about the origins of my daily sketches, why I started them, and why I still do them today. Come on, let's go watch. Let's go watch me do a drawing. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about my daily sketches and kind of the origin of that and why I still do them. About 2005 or so, I discovered Eric Kennedy's blog. It was filled with hundreds and hundreds of drawings of just about every character you could think of. And the majority of them he did, he called them 90 minute, I can't remember exactly what they were, but they were 90 minute pieces. And his whole concept was the first 90 minutes of the day, or at some point during the day, he would uh, put on a movie and do a sketch using that term loosely, because these were brilliant pieces. They started off in the early days as a character or a character in a prop. And by the, over the years, they became these beautiful, beautiful scenes, cover quality most of the time. And I was so inspired by them. It was like a little mini art school for me to just sift through Eric's blog and see how he interpreted all of our favorite characters from comics and pop culture. So it was really cool. And like anything else, you're like, oh man, I think I'd like to try that. So I did, you know, I'd last a hot two days, you know, <laughs> I'd do like two drawings and those definitely didn't take me 90 minutes. They, they take me 290 minutes. So I'd give up and just continue on with my work. And, you know, maybe six months later, I'd get the urge to try it again and I'd fall off. And then a couple years later, I'd try it again. And around 2006, we started a drawing night, like a drink and draw in Chicago. That definitely helped me kind of get out of my head as far as what I felt like pieces needed to be. I didn't think about them in such rigid terms of needing to be these beautiful masterpieces of finished artwork planned out where I've done a sketch and light boxed it and really refined it. I got in the habit of just kind of us throwing topics out there at these drink and draws and then just kind of playing around and seeing what you could do on the fly. And, and I really started to feel very comfortable with what, what I guess I would, what would be considered somewhat of a more improvisational style of drawing cartooning. Flash forward a couple of years to 2009, 2010, and I decide that I'd like to try to jump back into that idea of doing daily sketches. I changed it up a little bit. I decided that I didn't want to take any longer than an hour. I had a lot of work to get to. So the first hour of the day would be me drawing whatever I wanted, whether that's fan art, whether it's, you know, an idea or, or a feeling or a mood that I was in and make something up completely. But it was just, it was, it was about freedom. So the first day I decided to do Thanos. No idea why. <laughs> I think I just never have drawn really Thanos before at that point. So I just thought, oh, that's a cool character. It was always about kind of pushing myself as well. So I draw Thanos. I posted online on my blog and Scott Morse hits me up like that day or the next day and was like, oh man, that's so cool. It's a cool idea. And I think, I think I had the blog post was something about, you know, making my big declaration that I'm back and I'm going to do daily sketches. And, you know, one of those things where you announce something and you rarely ever follow through, but I thought, well, if I announce it, maybe I'll be more apt to follow through. So I throw it out there. Scott Morse says, man, this is a really cool idea. For, oh, you know what? For those who you don't who don't know, Scott Morse is um, a brilliant cartoonist who's who wrote and drew one of my favorite graphic novels called Soul Wind. Um, there's a new printing of that out right now. Go grab it. Scott is also one of the head story people at Pixar. So just an all around genius. All right. Um, so Scott hits me up and says, hey, this is such a great idea. Why don't we do a blog together where we come up with subject matter. Why don't we do a blog together and we take the same subject matter, each do our interpretations of it. So the same, the same comes up. Oh, so today will be cat in the hat and we'll both draw cat in the hat or we'll do a whole, we did, you know, when we pick subject matters for a whole week, we do a week of star Wars. We do a week of Harry Potter. We do a week of Dr. Seuss and each of us would draw the same thing each day. So that blog, which we called Scotty Scott, we ran for about a year, year and a half, two years. I can't remember, but 
we did a ton of drawings. Um, one of the other things that Scott kind of came to me with at the very beginning was like, we'll draw the same things every day and then we'll put them up for sale. Like kind of like a convention sketch. And I was like, well, that sounds kind of cool. I, I didn't think that people would want to buy them daily. Who, you know, fine. We, we did that and, and I was completely wrong. People bought them within minutes every day. We, we So it was kind of a, not only was a fun experiment um, on the art, artistic side, it also was a brand new stream of income, which was really cool, right? Anytime you're a freelance artist and you're out there uh, trying to make a living with with art, it's always, it's always good when you find a new way to bring in a little extra cash. So um, we did that. We, we went on for a year and a half, two years. And at some point, you know, we were both just really busy with work. It was getting harder for us to coordinate weekly or daily or anything like that. So we kind of let that go. We were going to do kind of an improv comic that was going to be kind of the new iteration of the site. And again, it was just, it was getting very difficult to, to coordinate. There was a lot. We were very busy. We let that go, but I couldn't let go of the idea of the daily sketches. I, I had fun. I was getting faster. Um, I liked interpreting all these different characters in different ways. I liked revisiting the same character a couple times to see how differently I could do them each time. So I kept going with it, and I'm still going today. I still try to take only an hour. Clearly don't do them every single day. I wish I, I, wish I could. The thing that I realized over the years that, that the real big benefit to these sketches that, that were not for a job or were not for anything other than just having fun putting pencil to paper was I got a chance to experiment on a lot of levels. I get a chance to experiment with shape and, and proportions and just overall style. I can change that up every day. There's, I don't need to stay consistent. Like, you know, when I start a book, like I start The Wizard of Oz, I was drawing that book for almost five years or over five years. So like I'm having to kind of stay consistent and draw in the same way in the same lines and the same characters for years. These daily sketches give me an opportunity to break outside of that. I don't have to be consistent with them every day. I can use a really thin nib one day. I can use a brush the next day. I can I can do in crayon if I want. I can do colored pencil. I can really get in and throw watercolor around. Like all of these things started to make me realize that that these daily sketches just weren't about like quote unquote having fun or or making a little extra <laughs> a little extra cash they actually became a tool for me they became a way for me to try out a new brush try out watercolors try out things that I don't get to necessarily on interior pages of my comics and don't necessarily get to on my covers or or you know things like that so and also get to draw characters that I'm not going to be able to get to draw for my daily work I've been at Marvel for almost 20 years I do books at image I've never worked at DC I've never worked at some of these other companies so it's a chance also to be like oh you know what today I like to draw Batman. I'd like to draw Bane or Clayface. So it's really fun. It's also been a really cool way for me to interact with people online, the readers and fans and things like that. So I'll throw out on Instagram or Twitter, or, uh, hey guys, give me some daily sketch suggestions. It kind of sparks me and, and lets me know what everybody's into at the moment based on their replies and how it's been interesting over the years to watch that change. Like which characters are popular now and which characters is everybody responding to. And so it's fun and a learning experience on a lot of levels. All right, before we get out of here, I do have to point out a mistake I made on this sketch. I did not draw his tail. Um, I didn't even realize that I didn't draw his tail until we had already shipped the piece to whoever bought it. I was looking at it. I was actually putting together this video and looked and realized I totally forgot Kid Hellboy's tail. So you'll see at the end of this video, um, I have added it in the digital files. At least there is a version uh, in the color file that has uh, the tail that I absolutely missed. Yeah. Epic fail. So thank you guys for hanging out, watching me sketch this daily sketch of Kid Hellboy, listening to me ramble on. I hope you guys stick around. I'm going to try to do more and more videos over, over time and really kind of focus on this YouTube channel a little bit more and share, you know, some of the tools I work with and some of my process and just, a I don't know, a little bit about the life of a cartoonist. So I hope you guys are interested and stick around and come back and check it out. So subscribe, hit the little bell down there for the alert, and uh, I will see you guys next time.